All right, first of all, this is Mark Romero here with Eric Romano. And Eric just got in a question from somebody just signed up for the summit I want to ask you. Uh, basically, he says, why would criminal defense lawyers benefit from attending the seminar? I thought it was mostly for civil plaintiffs attorneys. So what do you have to say about that? Well, it's a great question, uh, and I will tell you that uh, I think one of the greatest benefits of attending uh, the Trial Lawyers Summit is that you get to learn from great courtroom advocates from all over the country, not just criminal trial lawyers, not just civil trial lawyers, but the best of both worlds. And I can tell you as a lawyer that does uh, both criminal and civil trial work, uh, some of the greatest courtroom tips and techniques I've learned have come from civil trial lawyers. I think there's a lot of overlap between the two and there's a lot that criminal defense lawyers can learn from civil trial lawyers and vice versa. So I think you get that uh, exposure to uh, other lawyers that you might not normally see if you're going strictly to a criminal defense lawyer program. Sure. Great. And I didn't realize that NTL, particularly the past few years, is just about half criminal defense lawyers and half civil because it is, you know, the top 100 per state of both criminal defense lawyers and the civil lawyers. So much more involvement in the past several years of the criminal defense lawyers. And like you, Eric, I do a lot of criminal defense work as well. And I sort of started here years ago with NTL thinking criminal trial lawyers are the real lawyers, right? But I was pleasantly surprised at the quality of lawyering and expertise in the civil bench. Right. Well, I think a big part of that is civil trial lawyers are exposed to a lot of issues, a lot of experts, a lot of disciplines that criminal lawyers don't typically see on a regular basis. And I think that really complements the work you do. I mean, let's face it, if you are a courtroom trial lawyer, okay, it is all about trial advocacy and there's a lot to learn from each other. So here's another question. Um, what do we expect from this year's uh, criminal defense workshop and how is it different from previous years, what can we expect? Well, uh, we're gonna try a different format this year. I think having a workshop um, keeps it a smaller, more intimate setting and really more interactive uh, because I think many of us are uh, so used to the traditional seminar where you get talking heads up behind a podium. Uh, this is a way for attendees to bring your own case, sit down in a more casual, relaxed setting almost in a round table format with veteran courtroom lawyers to talk about and strategize over your toughest cases, your toughest issues. A great way to just get uh, feedback uh, and to brainstorm through some of the tough problems. Yeah, and uh, Eric, both you and I were, you know, had worked at the workhorse before and at the boot camp. I had no idea how much I was going to get into it, how much I was gonna like this format, but I will tell you not only teaching it to the extent of helping some of the younger lawyers learn some of, from some of the mistakes that we've made. But the idea of learning from those younger lawyers some real interesting perspectives that, you know, I didn't have. I mean, I learned as much as we taught at the uh, boot camp last year because some of these young lawyers come in with some great ideas, some great use of technology. And the idea of being willing to share and the capability of sharing that with other young lawyers, other older lawyers. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, not just to be up there talking, but to be up there listening. Absolutely. Well, and they, and they raise some good questions and good issues that frankly, I haven't thought through before. So it's a good opportunity uh, for us, uh, even as the veterans to kind of work through some new issues and approach things in a new way. Mm -hmm. So this is another question that came up a little bit similar, but a personal experience of how you benefited or what you learned, one one tidbit of your previous attendance at a summit? Well, you know, that, that's a tough question to answer because I've been going for so many years and I feel like I've walked away with so many great tips, great suggestions. Uh, you know, as, as I often say, I've, I've never come up with a good original idea. I've stolen it all from my predecessors, but that's the benefit of these CLE programs and the summit in particular, because you get to learn from such a, a wide variety of top caliber trial lawyers from all over the place. Uh, for me, the, the greatest benefit to attending the summit for years has been the people I've gotten to meet. Uh, Mark, for example, you and I have developed a very, very good friendship. Uh, we are colleagues, we have co-counsel cases together, and that relationship formed 
by meeting you and getting to work with you uh, at the Trial Lawyer Summit. Um, but that to me is the single greatest value in attending because although I do learn a lot, uh, the real takeaway is the people I get to meet, uh, the relationships and friendships that are formed along the way. Yeah, it's funny because this wasn't scripted, but I was thinking through it as, I, as you were answering the question and I'm thinking, I learned from John Romano, not saying that, not just because he's got your same last name, but I remember the dedication, the hard work, and the effort you have to put into being a really good trial lawyer. And John, of course, just epitomizes that. But then you got Mark Lanier and his just casual nature of you want to listen to him and you just want to vote for whatever he asks you to vote for. <laughs> then you got Mike Papantonio with his, with his passion, you know, with the focus that he has on helping younger lawyers get to be better. But what it really came down to is not those individual skills that you learn, but just like you said, it is truly, and I've said these words, it's the NTL community. It is undeniable, and I've been involved in, just like you, Eric, a lot of other organizations, but the community, the connection, and the willingness of the community to give the best of themselves to the rest of the people is what I found far and above in NTL and nowhere else. It just... I want to go not only just to learn, but I want to now go to literally get back in touch with 500, 700 people I now call friends. Right. Yeah. All right, so here's another one. Um, 2021 is the 10 year anniversary of the summit. So now you got to tell us your best summit memory. Again, like the last question, I'm not sure I can pick out just one, but I'll tell you what stands out to me are, uh, aside from the great CLE and the relationships, just the, the camaraderie uh, and networking that goes on there. Um, I think of the, the Sunday night Super Bowl parties, um, the opening receptions out by the beach, and of course, uh, although it's from somebody here in South Florida, Heading down to Miami is not a big change, but if you're from elsewhere, coming down to Miami Beach uh, in the middle of winter uh, is a great escape. Uh, but the criminal defense lawyer reception uh, that, that you've hosted many times, just that chance to kind of take off uh, your lawyer hat for a couple hours, relax, socialize, and just get to know wonderful trial lawyers who happen to be wonderful people that you can just talk to, find out what you share in common, and it's building those bonds that make us better lawyers and better advocates for our clients. Yeah, I've got two great memories. One literally was the first time I walked into the summit when I was first invited, I was getting an award for a case that I just had, that Zimmerman case. And, and it was just amazing to walk into the crowd, um, not only just because I was sort of being honored, but like we said before, the community just sort of brought me in. I mean, these are people I had never met before, um, never really spoken to except for, you know, setting up the invitation. But when I got there, I was brought in as though it was, you know, a long lost buddy. I was automatically part of the community, automatically part of the group. You know, some thoughts that I had and opinions I had were listened to. So that was probably my best, greatest memory. The second one was the first time that I was given the opportunity to speak to the crowd in the main room. Um, and it was about 800, 900 people in the room. I spoke about jury selection. And I remember, you know, there were no, no newspapers opened up, nobody with their feet up on the table, nobody on their phone in the back of the room. Everybody was engaged and it wasn't, it was every presentation that was given. And I really realized that this is a group who focuses on making themselves better lawyers every day, every seminar, every trial and every summit. Uh, so those are my two most favorite memories.